However, Antoine still wasn't sure what to do about the young red-haired boy. He didn't seem like a bad kid, just unusually talented in at least one area. The fact that he'd been hiding in that tree seemed to indicate that he wouldn't have had the power to fight off the orcs on his own, which was perfectly natural for a boy of his age. It could still have been a trick, of course, by a sorcerer or a djinn or another wielder of magic to gain entry into Arryn, but something about that explanation rang hollow, too. It didn't make Antoine feel very good, but he knew that if Don wanted to enter Arryn, he couldn't refuse to let him. After all, if there really were more orcs lurking around, then leaving Don out in the wild alone would have been like murdering him. At last, Antoine sighed and started back towards town at a much slower pace, with Don following quickly and doing a very good job of keeping up. The boy was obviously in very good shape, and still filled with the energy of youth, to say nothing of being amazed by Antoine's feats of strength and stealth. However, as he walked, Antoine made sure to ask his next question quickly, in the hopes of getting it out before Don could interrupt. You said you came from Gellum, and that you spent a lot of time in orchards. I take it, then, that you actually come from Troma or another farming village, and that Gellum was just your last stop on your journey here. Yeah, Don remarked, looking a bit dreamy-eyed. But I wish I could have stayed there. All the knights were there, even Landry. Um, you know about Landry, right? Know about him, Antoine replied, feeling a little streak of pride travel up his spine. We used to be like brothers. We trained under the same combat instructor for years before he became a knight. He could have been an instructor himself if he'd wanted to, but all he ever wanted was to be a knight. Wow. Don muttered in stunned amazement, his former irritation fading away. You really trained with Landry? No wonder you can fight. You must really be somebody important. True, Antoine replied, unable to keep a prideful sort of smile out of his face for a minute. Fully half of the fighters in Arryn use my technique, and they owe me their allegiance. When I call for them, they respond, and together we defend our town against any one or anything that threatens to weaken or destroy it. That's my job. You mean you teach people how to fight? Don asked, his eagerness seeming, if anything, to increase. Wow, that's great. See, I came here because I heard Arryn had all the best fighters in Graham, maybe even in all of Eldrum, and I want to be a knight too. I know knights have to learn a lot of other things too, but the way I see it, if I don't learn to fight at some point, I'll have a tough time becoming a knight. Yes, Antoine remarked somberly. But I think there's more to it than that. I mean, Gellum has an army, and assuming that you've graduated school, you should be old enough to enlist. Well, yeah, Don replied, looking a little reserved. But when I was in Gellum, I met an old knight who said there used to be a pilgrimage for knights. They travel all over Graham and learn all about the people, and try to soak up as much experience as they could, and face the worst the kingdom has to offer. Then when they got back to Gellum, they were ready to be knights. He said knights were stronger back then, because the pilgrimage was tougher than the way they appoint knights now, and I decided that if I'm going to be a knight, I want to be a strong knight, like Landry. That's wise. Antoine replied almost immediately, nodding his head as he led Don back towards Arryn. And if you really want to learn how to fight, this is the place to do it. However, even as he said those words, all of Antoine's worries about Don being the bait for some kind of wicked trap had suddenly vanished. By that point, his only concerns had to do with Don asking one question in particular, one question that he wasn't ready to answer. All too soon, however, just as the gates of Arryn were opening to admit the two of them, Don did indeed ask another question, and it was exactly the one that Antoine had been dreading. You said half the people in town learned their technique from you. What about the other half? The moment Don asked that question, Antoine's scowl deepened, and he was still scowling a moment later when the gates of town closed behind them, and they were both inside Arryn's protective walls. Without even looking at Don, Antoine spoke to him one last time, unable to hide his anger for a moment. Never mind that, Antoine said. It's not important. If you want to learn to fight, then you can find some place to sleep for tonight and ask somebody where my training compound is tomorrow morning. Anybody in town could tell you. The comment must have seemed a bit rude to Don, but he didn't say anything about it. In fact, he responded with a very respectful and somewhat nervous, Yes, sir, which made Antoine feel a little better. It was hard to stay mad at someone like Don, who really didn't mean any harm, after all. Don couldn't help but feel a little confused by Antoine's reaction to his question, and he was certainly still curious about what the other fighters in town were like, and what kinds of techniques they used. But for the moment, he was willing to sit on that curiosity until the following morning. Don spent only a few moments walking through Arryn until he found a fountain to refill his canteen at and take a good refreshing drink. Then, exhausted from his long sprint, his short climb, and the exhilarating sights he'd just seen, he unrolled the thin bedroll that he'd brought with him on the ground and lay down, hoping that he'd get to sleep soon, so that the next day would dawn that much quicker. When Don had fallen asleep the night before, he hadn't got a good look at the city of Arryn. It had been far into the evening, and half of the city had been in shadows, and when he woke up on the following morning, that hadn't really changed. Half of the city was still in shadows, it was just the other half.
Don only took a few moments to roll up his bedroll and get another drink of water in the morning before he started asking around about Antoine, but oddly the first three people he asked didn't reply to his question aloud. They just scowled at him unpleasantly and walked off. At first Don had a hard time figuring out why that was, but then he noticed something else that hadn't occurred to him before. Half of the adults in town had knives and pouches hanging from their belts, and the other half had swords. Everyone in town seemed to be armed, which, in a place called the City of Fighters, shouldn't have been too surprising. But the real surprise was the way the people in that town were acting towards one another. The ones with the knives were polite to each other, but always seemed to be scowling at the swordsmen. And the swordsmen, in turn, were friendly with each other, but had a coldness in their eyes whenever they looked at someone with knives on their belts. Don had never seen anyone act that way before. It was bizarre. Originally, Don had held out hope that Antoine might have had the chance to cheer up after getting a good night's sleep, but if anything, that morning, his frown had only gotten deeper when Don met him outside his training compound. We need to settle a few things before we get to any actual training, Antoine remarked as he and Don stood at the large wooden gate surrounding his compound. I think the first thing we should talk about is money. You said you'd made some back in your hometown. How much do you have left? About fifteen bits, Don replied, starting to feel a little bit nervous. All right, I only charge ten bits for a student, so if you give me the money, I don't see any reason why we can't start right now. Don felt pretty uncomfortable around Antoine, but he still wanted the combat training more than anything, so after a few moments, he only had five more bits left in his pouch. No sooner had the bits disappeared into one of the pouches on Antoine's belt, however, than he'd started to explain what the training would involve. Most of the time that you spend here is going to be spent improving your techniques of stealth and long-range combat, but for the first few days, it's not going to be that easy, because you need to learn the basics first. The first basic is to learn to navigate in the dark, and the second is to detect enemies in the dark. Remember, though, that these are still just the basics, so don't get too cocky if you master them quickly. Of course, those words only made Don feel more nervous, but he'd already committed to what he wanted to do for the next few hours. In only a moment, he'd followed the combat instructor inside. By the time Don left Antoine's training compound, he was aching all over, and he liked Antoine even less than he had before. However, he wasn't giving up. He'd already sacrificed too much to get there and try to become a knight. Don's training had begun in a closed-off room in complete and utter darkness. He'd never had to navigate darkness before, so it took him over half an hour to get used to it. But when he finally did, a new stage of his training had started. Something that felt a lot like a blunt piece of wood had struck Don from one side and he'd heard the voice of Antoine from the darkness warning him to try to anticipate the next move, to try to hear the sound of the wood as it traveled through the air towards him. In a real battle, your enemies won't hesitate to lash out at you from the darkness. Learn to sense their attacks with more than just your eyes, and darkness will be your weapon instead of theirs. Pretty much everything that Antoine did seemed to make Don angrier and angrier, and yet he knew there was no backing out. One way or another, he had to finish that training, because it would all be worth it some day. However, just as Don was comforting himself with those thoughts on his way out of the training compound, someone brushed right past him, almost knocking him over. In that moment, Don's rage reignited, and he spun around to face the person, only to shrink back in absolute, unreasoning terror.